Straight ahead on CCX News, the Elm Creek Park Reserve with something to be thankful for this Thanksgiving, their earliest ski trail opening ever. Plus, meet a Golden Valley resident with a story to share just in time for Vikings Packers weekend. But first, from menu changes to emptier produce shelves, the local impact of an E. coli alert right before Thanksgiving. CCX News starts right now. Hello and thanks for joining us. An E. coli alert has local grocery stores and restaurants scrambling right before the busy Thanksgiving holiday. The warning from the CDC has grocers and chefs getting rid of romaine lettuce. Reporter Meredith Hackler has more. Fresh produce isn't the first thing that comes to mind when we think of Thanksgiving. However, having a salad with your Thanksgiving dinner is still a holiday staple in many households. But if you're looking for romaine lettuce, you won't find it at a grocery store near you, like at Olmsted's Fresh Market in Crystal. We got emails during the night and to pull all of our romaine for safety's sake. So. The government's issued a recall, so we did it immediately. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says that at least 32 people in 11 different states have been sickened by a dangerous type of E. coli that is linked to romaine lettuce. The bacteria can't be washed away. Researchers found it embedded in the romaine lettuce leaves. It's not just the romaine, it's also the salad mixes that have romaine in it, you know, and then romaine hearts. Here at Olmsted's Market, you'll see signs like this regarding the romaine lettuce recall, but don't worry, if you're looking for green for your Thanksgiving dinner, there are other options. Just about any other uh, mixed greens. There's so many different kinds of salad mixes now, so they just have to pick something that they would like and uh, go from there. And while the day before Thanksgiving is one of the busiest days of the year for Olmsteads. This is a real big day for us. We've got a mountain of special orders, and so as the day goes on, it gets busier and busier. How are you? We'll uh, do better than double uh, normal business uh, today. The lack of lettuce doesn't have them worried. I don't think it's not going to have a huge effect. Romaine is just a real small part of what we sell. In Crystal, Meredith Hackler, CCX News. If you have romaine lettuce in your refrigerator, throw it away since it could be contaminated. The CDC has yet to, deter to determine the source of the E. coli, and there is no word yet on when you will see romaine lettuce back on grocery store shelves. Now to another Thanksgiving warning. According to the Minnesota Department of Public Safety, 17 people died from fires in Minnesota last year in November and December alone. Maple Grove fire officials are urging people to take extra precautions when preparing Thanksgiving dinner, especially if they are frying a turkey. This video shows what can happen when proper measures are not taken. It's important to make sure the bird is completely thawed before putting it in the fryer. If it's still partially frozen, it's going to cause problems. Got to make sure that the oil isn't too high because you drop the bird in and then it overflows. Uh, turkey fryers are made to be used outdoors, out in the driveway, away from the house. With more folks turning up the furnace and spending more time indoors, fire officials say it's important to have carbon monoxide detectors on every level of the home and test them monthly to make sure they're working. Local watersheds and local streams will benefit from recent water quality of projects approved by the Hennepin County Board. One of the projects will address flooding near Medicine Lake Road and Winnetka Avenue, a longtime problem near the New Hope Golden Valley border. The fix includes increasing pond storage of water runoff from Bassett Creek. Other projects include stream stabilization work along Rush Creek and Maple Grove. Another involves Elm Creek and Plymouth. Money will also go to reduce phosphorus impacting the Shingle Creek watershed in Crystal and Brooklyn Park. All the projects are paid for by special tax levies found on your property tax bill. Well, for Elm Creek Park Reserve, it's the place to be if you're looking for some outdoor fun. Crews have been working around the clock to get the trails ready for cross-country skiing. This is the earliest opening ever for the trails. And from the looks of things, there are a lot of excited people eager to enjoy the sooner-than-expected ski season. People really get excited about kicking off the season. You know, they, they wait all year 
to be able to, to get out and, and cross country ski. And you know, because of our great maintenance crew and our ability to manufacture snow, uh, we're sort of the, the only game in town, so to speak. Friday is National Opt Outside Day. The folks at Elm Creek are encouraging people to skip the mall and instead get outside and do something active, like skiing or tubing. Well, still ahead, the complete book on the Hennepin County Library System. From the selection to the processing to repairs, we'll show you how it all comes together next. Plus, a local Olympic gold medalist sees her high school hockey number retired. That's later in sports. But first, above normal temperatures to start out the Thanksgiving weekend with possible rain Friday afternoon. offers whether you go to them or they come to you. In the final installment of our 21st Century Library series, we go behind the scenes to see how they make it all happen. Here's Shannon Slatton. Hennepin County residents are very in tune to what's going on and they're voracious readers, so it takes a lot for us to keep up with them. Eight million dollars a year to spend on books and other materials sounds like a lot, but spread that across 41 libraries and thousands of patrons and you can quickly see that being selective is important. Our six selectors work really, really hard and we have to make really tough decisions and I think and it's fun, it's absolutely fun. Whenever I tell people what I do, people are always really jealous. <laughs> fun, but a lot of hard work. Chelsea and her colleagues work with publishers and professional reviews to choose much of the material they buy. Then once all of, I've made those decisions, then I, then I have to do the proactive work, which is the digging to figure out what are we missing? Who's being left out of our collection? And where are those materials? And that's a lot of the more self-published stuff. And sometimes it's the self-published works that mean the most to some patrons. This is an example of a self-published book um, or a very small press. Um, I believe the author is the publisher, A Tale of Two Mommies, which is about a, uh, a little boy and his two mommies. And this has actually been around for a number of years. This was one of the first books in the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years um, that was really widely available that had a lesbian mothers and, and interracial as well, which is, you know, we're trying to find materials that reflect all the different lifestyles that are in our county so that every patron who comes into the library can see themselves in our books. Once materials are selected, they go into circulation where they eventually end up here. Automated materials handling machine. This large contraption is really a giant robot that sorts every material that goes through the library system and makes sure it gets delivered to the right building. As the book is going down the AMH, what it's doing is it's reading this barcode. The barcode tells them exactly which location it should go to and it's also linking this RFID tag or security tag. It links these two together. Once those are linked, then it knows exactly where to send it to. And in, in this instance, if there was no hold on this material, it would be sent to Brookdale. Capable of handling up to 1,600 items per hour, the machine makes it possible to move about 25,000 materials through the library system every day. It's wonderful. It helps with all of our workflow. It saves a lot of time. So this has been this has been amazing. I love it personally. And what about when books get damaged? Sometimes they're just replaced. Other times the case is in bad shape. We need to replace it the case, but the text is in wonderful shape. They come here to Central Library in Minneapolis. That's where Frank Hurley spends his days giving new life to old books. Having someone with Frank's expertise on staff is vital not only for the health of the library's collections, uh, but can also extend the expertise of the libraries. Uh, the library into uh, other areas of the county. From rebinding broken books to preserving historic memorabilia, Frank does it all. I really feel lucky to work here. And it's a great job and I love working with books and I mean I love everything about old books. I love the smell of old books, um, the feel of old books and I, I really think we still need books even with all the digital media that's available to us. Having an in-house book bindery is somewhat rare these days, but for a system the size of Hennepin County's, staff says it's more than worth it. We send out hundreds of books every day um, from this library throughout the county and throughout the, the state and the region, so this collection is really getting used and 
So people really want to have access to these books. So in terms of the mission of this library and, and the mission of my work, uh, it's, it really makes a lot of sense to me. And that's a look at Hennepin County's 21st Century Library, from its humble horse-drawn beginnings to the massive high-tech operation that it's become. Special thanks to Brandon Bankston for putting this week's library series together. Still ahead, a Golden Valley senior living facility torn between purple and the green and gold. But first, we'll hear from one local boys hockey team as they get set for this weekend's big CCX Turkey Trot Hockey Tournament. John Jacobson is in next. Plymouth native Kelly Panic won a gold medal as a member of the 2018 U.S. Women's Olympic Hockey Team and is currently playing her senior season at the University of Minnesota. On Tuesday night, Panic received another honor as her high school number was retired in a pregame ceremony at St. Louis Park Arena. Panic wore number 19 for Benilde St. Margaret's from 2010 to 2014. As a senior, she scored 34 goals and led the Red Knights to the state tournament. Panic is the first female hockey player to have her number retired at Benilde. Honestly, there's not many times you can say you're the first person to do something, so that's pretty cool. And I know um, hopefully there will be many more people that, that come through this program and get the honor as well. And to be able to be here tonight and have you know, my high school jersey retired is really special. Um, this program and this school means a lot to me, and I'm really proud to come from, from both the community and, and the program. So it'll be really a special night. Following the ceremony, Benilde faced off against Minnetonka. The Skippers won 2 to nothing. The Maple Grove girls hockey team is ranked 8th in Class AA to start the season. They took on another local squad Tuesday night as Armstrong Cooper visited the Crimson. Scoreless in the second period when Leo O'Brien steals the puck, banks it off a defenseman skating in. And underdog Armstrong Cooper leads it 1 to nothing. But Maple Grove surges. Man and McMahon shot is blocked. Lawrence Stensley slides the loose puck in and that ties it at 1. Less than two minutes later, Goalie Nikki Harnett with the poke check on the pass, but Michaela Macklett turns and fires, and that makes it 2-1 Crimson. Stensley's shot hits traffic in front. McMahon there to put the backhander away for a 3-1 Maple Grove lead. Still in the second, McMahon on the rush shows why she's one of the Metro's best players, scoring for a 4-1 lead. The Crimson overcome a great performance by Wings goalie Harnett, who stops 47 shots. Maple Grove wins 5-1 to improve to 2-0. The Maple Grove boys hockey team also has high hopes this year. They'll join host Wysetta along with Edina and Holy Family at this weekend's CCX Turkey Trot Tournament at the Plymouth Ice Center. The Crimson completed the tryout process and also played some scrimmages up north in Moorhead. They take on Wysetta opening night of the Turkey Trot Tournament Friday. The Maple Grove guys look forward to this weekend. Um, I mean, it's a great test for us right away. We show up playing Wyzetta right away, which is always a tough game, always looking to show up hard against them, and it's a good test for a young team, and I think we were up to it. Um, it's, it's certainly fun playing in front of that crowd. I mean, obviously they're going to be jitters, especially with this younger group, but we um, have high expectations for them again, and I think they'll do a really good job for us. I get so excited, and I know the boys get excited, certainly playing Wyzetta right off the bat is big for them. They. Uh, you know, they grew up their whole lives playing Wyzetta and uh, getting over to that rank, the excitement, the togas, all that kind of stuff is just huge. And Here is the schedule for the Turkey Trot. Holy Family plays Edina, followed by Wyzetta and Maple Grove Friday. Saturday, we'll have live coverage of the third place game and championship on CCX1 and online at ccxmedia.org starting at 5 p.m. We'll have a full season preview on the Crimson next week here on CCX News. What are your plans for Thanksgiving? We posed that question to some high school athletes we visited this past week. Getting stuffed, just um, hanging together, watching football, eating good food. <laughs> uh, just spending time with family, eating turkey, obviously, and watching some football, and then thinking about the big game the next day. Delicious food. Lots of it. Lots and lots of food. It's good stuff. 
Um, usually everyone comes over to our house and we have a big dinner and I'll hang out, play some games, watch some TV, and it's a lot of fun to get to see a bunch of my family, so I'm excited. <laughs> um, I love Thanksgiving, that's my favorite holiday, so we will be eating all day. I'm, I'm a little greedy, I like macaroni, greens, dressing, ham, everything. <laughs> And sounds like fun. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you and to you, Delane. Back to you. All right, thank you, John. Up next, it's Vikings Packers Rivalry Week. We'll explain a Golden Valley resident's special connection to the big game when we come back. Finally, it's Packers Vikings Week. For Golden Valley's Janice Redmond, that means cheering for her Packers in the middle of Viking country. Here's Eric Nelson. My family, my children are all Viking fans because they were born and raised here. So I'm the only green and gold. You can take a Packer fan out of Green Bay, but you can't take their Packer passion away. Golden Valley's Janice Redmond, who resides at Covenant Village, is proof of that. Go Pack Go! In 1952, Redmond was a Green Bay cheerleader. And despite being in Minnesota since 1958, she is still a Packer backer. I feel fortunate that I had the opportunity to be a part of that cheerleading squad. It, it was just a delightful experience. Cheerleading was simple back in Redmond's day. Just pom-poms, turtlenecks, and long skirts. We were very modest. We didn't do um, all the acrobatic things that they do today. The Green Bay gals were the polar opposite of the flashy and glamorous NFL cheerleaders of this era. When people think of professional cheerleaders, they think of the cowboys and of course their costumes, which are rather skimpy. <laughs> Ours were far from that. Even though it's been decades since Redmond cheered for the pack, she remains a hardcore Green Bay fan. The loyalty is incredible. It is. It's hard to explain unless you've been there. For Redmond, the Packers are literally family. Hall of Fame running back Tony Canadeo is her uncle. And I think everyone loved him. He was a good friend of Vince Lombardi. Packer power is real for Redmond. She loves everything about the team, except for one cheesy thing. I do not like the cheese wedge. <laughs> now Janice doesn't have a ticket for the border battle matchup on Sunday night here at US Bank Stadium. Instead, she'll be back in Golden Valley, cheering on her beloved Green Bay Packers. In Minneapolis, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. I don't like the cheese wedge either. Well, that's all the news for now. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again here tomorrow starting at 4.